Hey guys, today we're taking a look at a sci-fi flick called The Faculty. This was one of my favorite movies growing up. Enjoy. Guaranteed to jack you up. A bunch of high schoolers are outside playing football. Their coach is a bit of a hothead. He walks around shouting, berating students, and even flips a table over. A mysterious figure approaches him from behind, but says nothing. The scene fades to black. A few teachers and the principal, Miss Drake, are seen working well into the night on how to allocate the school's annual budget. They wrap things up and head out, but Miss Drake forgot her keys. She heads back inside but hears something. Yeah, probably just the wind. She grabs the key and turns around. Coach Willis is looming over her. He remarks on her beauty, but Miss Drake is dismissive. He blocks her path and asks for a pencil. It takes some persistence until she finally hands it over. Once more, he tells her how beautiful she is before grabbing her hand and stabbing it with the pencil. Miss Drake slashes him with the keys in retaliation, then makes a run for it. She tries to exit, but the door is chained shut. Coach Willis turns on the intercom. Would Miss Drake please report to the principal's office? She runs towards another locked door and sees Mrs. Olson, but she doesn't have any keys either. Great. Miss Drake manages to find her keys and grabs a pair of scissors for self-defense. Coach Willis closes in, but Miss Drake gets out just in time, locking the coach in, but dropping her scissors. Miss Olsen stares blankly at Miss Drake and stabs her repeatedly with the scissors. <laughs> We're introduced to the high school and the main characters. They're Zeke, an intelligent but rebellious student, Casey, a bullied photographer for the school newspaper, Stokely, a goth outcast, Delilah, the paper's editor-in-chief and head cheerleader. Stan, her mistreated boyfriend, and Mary Beth, a naive transfer student. Zeke sells fake IDs in the bathroom and throws in something spicy. Guaranteed to jack you up. Casey tends to a bloody nose in the other stall. The faculty chill out in the staff room and wonder where Principal Drake is. Mr. Furlong notices that Coach Willis is suspiciously thirsty. Miss Olsen walks in, flashes a dead-eyed smile, and greets Coach Willis. Miss Burke, a timid teacher, asks the class a question. Zeke playfully answers. The tension between the two is palpable. Stan wants to quit the football team, but Delilah antagonizes him. She believes that as the head cheerleader, she belongs with a jock and not a bookworm. Mary Beth walks up to Stokely and asks her about the sci-fi book she's reading. Stokely is reserved and unapproachable. Mary Beth just wants to make some friends. Delilah runs up and teases Stokely while introducing herself to Mary Beth. Casey sits all alone in the bleachers, but at least he's got a juice box. He stumbles across a strange object in the field when Coach Willis abruptly appears behind him. He's getting quite good at that. He bullies Casey a bit. Get out of here. Casey runs off. Miss Olsen is also acting up as she ominously stares down Stokely. Casey enters his science class and shows Mr. Furlong what he found. Mr. Furlong examines the specimen under a microscope, noting its unusual biology. He concludes that it's likely a seed-dwelling organism and may in fact be a new species. Water is accidentally spilled on the organism, and it reanimates, writhing around. Mr. Furlong decides to stick it into an aquarium to see what happens. The organism swims around as stringy structures emerge from its body. Mr. Furlong sticks his hand in to examine the creature, but it suddenly splits in two before one of the halves bites his finger. He screams in pain. The class looks on with a mixture of fear and curiosity. Stan confronts Coach Willis about quitting the team. He gives an uncharacteristically friendly response. Stan heads over to enjoy a nice hot shower, but an unwelcome guest arrives. It's Miss Brummel. She screams for help. Her skin is peeling off and she's tearing off her clothes. Casey hears the commotion and runs for help. Stan consoles Miss Brummel and gets a handful of running scalp for his troubles. Shortly after, Miss Olsen reassures Stan that she will be okay and that she merely has cancer. Casey looks out the window and sees Coach Willis suspiciously standing in the middle of the football field. Miss Olsen watches Casey intently. Yeah. Sure. Zeke sells dirty movies to two students outside his car, but Miss Burke spots him. She gives him a timid lecture about his conduct, but Zeke has just the thing to calm her down. Chocolate flavored laxatives. She doesn't find it funny, so he brings out the big guns. How about these? Condoms. Magnum sized. And they're cherry flavored. Meanwhile, 
Delilah drags Casey into the faculty lounge. They snoop around in search of a juicy lead for the school newspaper. Casey finds a flask of alcohol in the cupboard, but Delilah reminds him that she exposed Mr. Tate's alcoholism last year. It can be such a... What? Delilah thinks Casey is flirting with her and is charmed, but the moment is cut short. Someone's at the door. They run into the closet as Coach Willis and Miss Olsen enter the lounge. They watch as the aliens indulge in some refreshing water. Nurse Rosa enters the lounge and the aliens watch her closely. Coach Willis closes in, but Rosa laughs it off. They go in for the kill as Casey and Delilah watch in horror. Coach Willis holds her down and as she struggles, he deposits a tiny alien in her ear. Delilah stumbles around in the closet, uncovering Miss Brummel's rotting corpse. It falls on top of her. The aliens hear the commotion and inspect the closet. Casey and Delilah book it. The police arrive the next day. Casey and his parents meet them in the lounge. He tells the police that Miss Brummel's corpse is in the closet. Principal Drake and the other alien faculty members are playing it cool. Apparently there's been a misunderstanding. Miss Drake opens the closet, revealing a CPR doll, aptly named Resuscitation Annie. Casey argues with the cops and faculty to no avail. Miss Drake takes the police officer into a private room and closes the door before flashing a mischievous smile at Casey. Casey's parents are troubled. They consider sending him to therapy. Miss Drake and the cop exit the room. The cop has changed. His expression is blank and his eyes are dead. They got her. The police officers leave. Miss Drake offers to speak to Casey's mom in private, but Casey quickly butts in, agreeing to his mother's therapy suggestion. They go home. Miss Drake winks at Casey on his way out. Back home, Casey's parents search his room for drugs. They take away his phone, internet, and even his dirty magazines. Sorry, pal. No more flogging the bishop. The next day, Casey's dad drives him to school. Understandably, Casey doesn't want to get out of the car, but he has no choice. Coach Willis approaches the car as Casey walks away. They both look at Casey. Casey runs into Delilah in the halls. Delilah is wearing a nerdy disguise. They hide in the bathroom and briefly discuss what happened. Delilah leaves in search of Stan. Meanwhile, the alien faculty grows in number. They love AC, hate coffee, and can't get enough of water. Back in class, Stokely is eyeing Stan. Mary Beth encourages her to talk to him and pushes her into his lap. Stokely nervously asks him about the big football game, but Stan tells her he quit the team. They talk about it. Stan is tired of everyone sucking up to him just because he's the team captain. He just wants people to let him be. Stokely and Stan share a moment of mutual understanding. At the lockers, Mary Beth inquires about Zeke's powder-filled pens. It's magic dust. He offers her some, but she adamantly declines. Meanwhile, Stan and Stokely look on as students are lined up in the halls. Stokely walks up to take a closer look and finds that the students are being led into a private ear exam with Nurse Rosa. Principal Drake shuts the door. Delilah walks up to Stan and asks to talk in private. Casey does the same with Stokely. Mary Beth walks outside and makes small talk with Zeke. Zeke looks around and realizes that something isn't quite right. You notice anything off today here at school? Two of Zeke's regular patrons walk up and buy some magic dust, but they have a bigger appetite than usual. They demand everything Zeke has, immediately raising his suspicion. Miss Brick pulls up, rocking a completely new look and demeanor. She's all over Zeke's case, bombarding him with verbal warfare. She's really laying it on thick here. Dickless, drug-induced excuse for human being. Oh, woman, what are you on? Uh... Things even get a little bit physical before she storms off. While in the library, Casey tells Stokely everything that happened. They get into a little discussion about sci-fi, with Stokely flexing her movie knowledge on Body Snatchers and The Puppet Master. She doesn't believe Casey, but entertains him nonetheless. She suggests that the aliens, if they are indeed real, may be spreading through parasites. They meet back up with Delilah and Stan, then head over to the science room in search of the aquarium. The parasite is gone. Stan is lost, so Casey quickly fills him in. We think aliens are taking over our school. He's in disbelief. Meanwhile, Zeke breaks into the science lab and Mary Beth tags along. This is where he gets the equipment he needs to make his magic dust. Things get flirty and Zeke moves in for a quick kiss. They're interrupted by the voices of Casey and Stan, which they can hear through the room's vent. They overhear their alien discussion and make their way over to greet them. Zeke teases Casey, telling him that if anyone's an alien, it's definitely him. Mr. Furlong enters and wonders what the students are doing out of class. Zeke tells him that Casey thinks he's an alien. Mr. Furlong laughs it off, but quickly gets serious, shutting the door's blinds. 
Zeke tries to leave the room, but Mr. Furlong grabs him by the arm and throws him down. Casey attempts the same, ending up in a similar situation. Zeke finds himself a weapon and strikes Mr. Furlong, severing four of his fingers. Furlong's fingers scurry off as he pins down Zeke. Zeke stabs him in the eye with his magic dust pen. The alien fingers attack the other students and one is seen crawling up Delilah's leg. Furlong is about to finish Zeke off when he suddenly starts convulsing and dies. Casey collects one of the parasites in a jar, then the group runs off to the parking lot. All the other students are looking at them or acting strangely. They get in Zeke's car and drive off. The police have blockaded the road for inspections, so Zeke swerves off in another direction and heads home. Everyone looks around and admires Zeke's makeshift home laboratory. Mary Beth spots some caffeine pills and realizes that this is the secret ingredient of Zeke's magic dust drug. A gun on the counter catches Casey's eye. Zeke cuts a piece of the parasite off and drops it in the rat's cage, then resuscitates the parasite with water. It attacks the rat and enters through its ear canal. Zeke puts the rat down and proceeds to dissect it. He comes to learn that the parasite is heavily dependent on water, hence why his caffeine powder is so effective against it. Caffeine is a diuretic. It dries you out. The group turns to Stokely for insight, seeing as she's a sci-fi buff. She theorizes that the parasites are all connected to a leader, and that if they just kill this leader, everyone will return to normal. Casey insists that they should fight off the alien invasion, but Stan makes light of the fact that any one of them could be an alien. Delilah begins to suspect Stan due to his recent change in behavior. Zeke decides that they should vet each other by snorting his magic dust. Everyone is apprehensive. Casey goes first, and within a few seconds, erupts in a fit of giggles. This freaks Stan out. He grabs the gun off the counter and points it at Casey. Zeke explains that he's just tweaking. Stan is on edge and holds Zeke at gunpoint until he snorts the magic dust. He passes. Next up is Stan and Stokely. They both pass. Things get tense between Delilah and Mary Beth while the rest of the room continues their high-induced giggle fest. Zeke decides that they should just snort it at the same time. Showdown. <laughs> they both snort it at the same time and Delilah violently recoils back in pain. Stan takes a look. Parasites are crawling beneath her skin. Casey points the gun at Delilah, but he hesitates. Stokely grabs the gun and starts firing. Delilah makes a mess, destroying Zeke's supply that runs away towards a car presumably piloted by one of the alien students. Mary Beth inexplicably laughs. The group reasons that they still have enough caffeine powder to take out the queen and that she must be at tonight's football game. The football team is dominating the competition, making sure to convert every opposing student they tackle. Damn, these guys are really good. The group arrives at the school's gym and conclude that Principal Drake must be the queen. Speak of the devil or alien. Stan and Zeke restrain her as Casey readies the powder. Stan holds her at gunpoint as Casey looms over her, caffeine in hand. Principal Drake plays dumb quite convincingly, fooling Casey and causing him to hesitate. However, Zeke is built different, so he shoots her right in the middle of her head. Perhaps there's been a mistake. Never mind, definitely not a mistake. Mary Beth runs up and carpets the zombified principal with caffeine powder, but she's a bit too heavy-handed, dumping the entire stash out onto her body. The body disintegrates. Stan decides to run outside to check up on the team. If the queen is in fact dead, they should be human again. Before he leaves, Stokely gives him a smooch. He runs up on the football team. Okay, they're definitely not human. Stan runs back to the door, pleading to be let in. But when prompted to take the test, he fails spectacularly. They got him. Casey and the others speculate on whether or not Coach Willis is the true leader. But Mary Beth reminds them that regardless, they're unarmed. Zeke butts in, saying there might still be some more caffeine powder in his car. Casey and Zeke go to the parking lot, but the football team is patrolling. Stan is now among their ranks. They roll under the buses for cover, and then Casey runs off in a different direction to act as a decoy. A chase ensues, but he finds refuge in one of the buses. Delilah appears behind him, teasing and taunting him as the football team attempts to bust down the rear door. He's completely sandwiched. Casey leaps upward and escapes through the hatch. Meanwhile, Zeke searches the trunk of his car, when Miss Burke appears, she playfully questions him about his cherry-flavored condoms. He spots a few more caffeine-filled pens in his car and stalls before abruptly hopping in to flee. Miss Burke dives in through the window. Hello, Zeke boy. Zeke begins to drive erratically to buy himself some time. He needs to come up with something quick. He heads straight into one of the buses, fastening his seatbelt moments before collision. Miss Burke goes flying through the windshield. Zeke stumbles out of the car, bloody and hurt. Miss Burke's severed head crawls around on tentacles in search of her body. It's a terrifying sight to behold. Zeke wants nothing to do with that and scurries off. Back at the bleachers, Mary Beth starts acting sus, 
yapping on about how maybe the aliens aren't so bad. Stokely looks at her suspiciously, but gets clocked in the face. Mary Beth reveals herself as the queen. Casey makes it back in time to witness the transformation. They run to the pool, and the alien queen follows suit. Stokely is grabbed, but just barely escapes thanks to Casey's efforts. They flee to the locker room while the alien queen transforms back into her human form. Zeke arrives in the locker room on wobbly legs. He's lost a lot of blood. Mary Beth, hugging the shadows, tells Zeke that Stokely is the queen. He looks at Stokely with fearful eyes. Mary Beth emerges from the shadows. She's naked. Zeke's suspicion is raised. He points this out, but she tries to seduce him. Zeke questions how she was able to pass the test. Mary Beth reveals she used sleight of hand, or in this case, tentacle, to deceive them. Zeke discreetly readies a caffeine pen and strikes, but Stokely stops him. She must have been transformed during the pool incident. Casey grabs her from behind and throws her in a storage room, locking her inside. Casey and Zeke run off, but are split up amongst the commotion. Casey sees Zeke get launched in the air. He runs to aid him, but he's unconscious. Mary Beth calmly walks the locker room, speaking to Casey in a soothing voice. Her true alien form is visible through her shadow. She argues that she can make Casey a part of something greater, something perfect, something fearless. An existence without attitude or conflict. An existence where everyone can belong. Casey retorts. I'd rather be afraid. Mary Beth cuts out the nice girl act and transforms into the queen again, launching lockers at Casey as he runs off. Casey runs towards the bleachers and sets them to close as the queen continues her pursuit. Casey baits her inside the bleachers as it closes. She's too focused on him to notice. The bleachers slowly close, segment by segment, entrapping the queen. <laughs> to jack you and stabs the queen in the eye she screams and launches several parasites into casey's face he screams in agony as they burrow into him but the caffeine begins to take effect killing the queen the parasites exit casey's face and die as the queen disintegrates one month later everything is back to normal the authorities have covered up the event zeke is seen playing football while miss brick watches and admires him stan and stokely share a kiss casey's recognized as a local hero Casey and Delilah kiss as a gaggle of reporters moves in to interview him. Things sure have changed, haven't they? They sure have, Casey. Now, would you mind telling the viewers to subscribe? Please?